Computer vision models are only as good as the data you provide them. And an essential part of providing good data is having good labels. Today, we're gonna walk through how to annotate images for object detection models so that you can create higher performing models simply by creating higher quality data. I'm Joseph from RoboFlow, and I'm gonna take you through seven techniques that you can apply so that you can have the highest quality data possible. Okay, so first things first, we're going to be building a model that does chess piece detection, okay? So for this example, I'm gonna be labeling chess piece images. Now, what do I mean when I say chess piece images? I mean that I have a series of images here that are chess pieces on a chess board. And what I need to do is I need to label these images with bounding boxes so that my model can learn how to create and understand and predict what a given piece is and where it is on the board. Okay, so let's dive in. Step number one is deciding good labels to use. That means that determining the ontology, like what should one piece be labeled versus another piece. In our chess problem here, we need to determine, do we wanna label everything as say pawn? Do we wanna say white pawn, black pawn? Why should we do one versus another? Tip number one, Create image labels that are as specific as possible for the problem you're solving. Creating specific, specific labels in the context of our chess problem might mean that we're gonna say, I have white pawns and I have black pawns. I have white kings and I have black kings, etc. The reason you wanna create specific labels is you can always combine together labels. But if you ever want to split something out, you'd have to relabel everything. Think about it. If you want to teach a model to recognize cars, you might say, oh, I could label everything vehicle. But then what if in the future you're like, ah, oh, I want to recognize a truck versus a sedan versus a semi? Well, maybe from the outset, you should have thought about what you want to do at three or six months time and label things as car, truck, and semi. And then you could always merge together those classes into just one class called vehicle. But to split that class back out, you would have to create all new labels. So for our first tip, creating very specific label names, in this case, I'm going to use white pawn, black pawn, white king, white rook, etc. Now let's go ahead and create some of these labels so I can demonstrate what I mean. And I'll go ahead and go right here. And this will be my white pawn. I'll go ahead and label all of these. Okay, so I've made all the white pieces and notice I have specific classes for each of them. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my black pieces. There we go. Okay, so I've labeled this image and notice I've created very specific label names. Each of my classes are individually named per each color. Now this makes it so that in the future, if I wanted to, for example, just train a model to recognize piece, I could merge all of these labels into one and just call it piece. If I want a model to just do pawns, I could merge together the white pawn and the black pawn data set into a label just called pawn, etc. But this gives me the flexibility to also have a model that recognizes white pawns that are distinct from black pawns. So that's tip number one, use specific label names. Okay, now tip number two is to create tight bounding boxes. Now, what do we say when we mean tight bounding boxes? Now, an example of a bad bounding box would be a, a label like this. So notice how this label does a good job. It, it encompasses the entirety of, for example, um, my white knight piece. However, this box is quite loose. And by loose, I mean there's a lot of space around it. Now, this isn't good because in computer vision, we want our models to be very precise and learn exactly what makes up an object and not confuse that object with things in the background. So when we say create tight bounding boxes, we mean I should go in here and make this bounding box be just right on the edges of this piece. Now to be clear, you do not want to create a bounding box that cuts off part of the piece. A box like this is actually perhaps worse than a loose bounding box. You want it to basically be tightly wound around the piece or the object of interest. So a box like that is pretty tight. Now we can do another one here. Let's create a really tight box here around my pawn, just like that. White 
on. So I'll fill in the labels for the rest of these pieces with really tight bounding boxes, but not boxes that omit part of the object of interest. So as tight as possible without cutting out part of the object. Let's do it. Okay, great. I've created a series of very tight boxes for each of my pieces. Now tip number three, I've actually been following this tip in my prior two tips. Tip number three is that you need to label all of the objects of interest. Meaning, I, if I want to teach my, mod, my model to recognize black pawns, I can't just label some of the black pawns on my image. I need to label all of the black pawns that are visible. This is because we need the model to learn what a black pawn looks like and what a black pawn doesn't look like. And so if we only label the black pawn sometimes, it will confuse our model. The model won't know that a black pawn always looks like as it does if we only label it some of the times. In fact, you actually see on this image, I didn't label my white queen. So I need to label all of my objects of interest. So I'll add my label here, white queen. Great. So tip number three is to label all of the objects of interest. Okay, now tip number four. Tip number four is how to handle objects that are blocking view of other objects. So we call this occlusion. Occlusion is when one object is in front of another object. The tip for occlusion is label occluded objects as if you could see them in their entirety. Now, to be fair, this tip depends a bit upon the problem that you're solving. Uh, there might be rare circumstances where you don't want to label um, as if you could see the entirety of the object. But in general, in most use cases, you do. And so it's okay to have bounding boxes that overlap. In fact, it's preferred if there's two objects that are visible. And so for tip number four, label occluded objects. Okay, so in this example here, you'll notice that I have some objects that are in front of other objects, just like the first image. My white queen is blacking part of my white bishop. I should label both of these as if I could see them in their entirety. So here I'll label my white bishop just as if I could see all of it, white bishop. And then I will also label my white queen. Now following tip number three, I need to label all of my objects that are viewable in this given image. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll label all of my objects of interest. Okay, so I've labeled all of my objects of interest, even the occluded ones. So, so far we've said label specific objects, create tight bounding boxes, label the uh, all objects of interest, and label occluded objects. Now, what is tip number five? Tip number five is label the entirety of an object. So don't cut off part of the object when you're labeling. So we kind of mentioned this when we were talking about tight bounding boxes, but you don't want to label like this you do want a label that includes the entirety of the object. So that's tip number five. Now tip number six, and now there's only two more tips. So tip number six is to create clear labeling instructions. I write down my labeling instructions and I share them with my team. You should too. Clear labeling instructions creates reproducibility so that other people can learn from and see what you've done and how to label things the best way possible. Now, tip number seven is use good labeling tools. So here I've been using RoboFlow for labeling all of my images, which helps me make sure of keeping track of which images I've labeled. As you can see here, the shaded ones I've already labeled and the unshaded ones I have yet to label. And I could even see all of my images in my data set here of my training set, my validation set, or even my unannotated ones. So I know that I need to go through and label each of these images in addition. And by the way, if you want this data set, but you want it to be done and fully labeled, it's available for you on public.roboflow.com. I have already released the final version of this labeled data set, so you can build your own chess piece detector. Okay, so in summary, as it comes to labeling images for computer vision, there's seven key tips that we've talked about so far. One, create specific label names. That was tip number one. Tip number two, create tight bounding boxes, but don't cut off part of the objects. Tip number three, label the entirety 
of an object or all objects. Label all objects. Tip number four, label occluded objects. And tip number five was label the entirety of an object. Tip number six, create clear labeling instructions that you can share with your team or outsourced labeling services. And tip number seven, use good labeling tools. If you wanna scale up your labeling operations, reach out to us at RoboFlow and we can connect you to services that will label your images for you. Just drop a link in the comments or reach out to us and we'll be able to help you out. That's it for now. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see more videos like this and tell us what other videos you want to see. Thanks so much.